Hi, I'm Melanie Williamson from The Custom Cakery. I'm going to show you how I cover a football cake. Now, I'm told that a lot of people find football cakes really hard to do and people have asked for this as a, as a tutorial. So I'm hoping I'll be able to pass on some tips and tricks that will make it a lot easier for you to make. Um, I understand the difficulty of trying to offer your customers value for money but also making a decent wage for yourself. And actually, these cakes are really quick and easy to make, I think. So hopefully you'll feel more confident after watching this to be able to give it a go yourself. I have a very old and battered ball tin, or sphere tin. Uh, I think mine was from Wilton. It is, um, makes you a, a perfect ball to start with. And I think where people sometimes go wrong is when they put their filling in, they obviously lose their shape of the football. Tutorials I've seen before normally recommend putting a really thin layer of buttercream between the two layers so you don't distort the shape. Um, I don't think that's good enough. I don't want to compromise on what my customers are getting. I want to have a really tasty cake with plenty of filling. So I taught my cake as I normally would. Uh, there's a le three layers of filling inside. Um, I trim the top slightly. So after it's baked, I let it cool in the tin. And then I will take the top little part off so it gives me a little bit of more of a gap. Um, and then I use my ganache layer to help recreate that perfect sphere. I'm gonna put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so here's my ganache sphere ready. Now, it's not a perfect sphere. And uh, the reality is we're gonna decorate the front to look absolutely beautiful. And then we're going to pop a scarf around the back to hide any indiscretions. Part of being um, an actual uh, sort of working cake lady that is, is, is producing cakes week in, week out is not to worry too much about it being like a competition level cake. We've got to give our, cake, our customers a really perfect cake as much as we can, but there's ways of, um, uh, of doing things so it works well for them and for us. So I've covered my board, 10 inch board, in some green paste ready and I've popped my cake down with a little bit of royal icing and let that set into position. I've used some cold boiled water and I've dabbed that on a piece of kitchen roll ready uh, and then so there's not too much water on my bowl and I've been around the bowl and put a little bit of water on so the paste will stick. I have these cutters, a pentagon and a hexagon. You won't use all the ones that I've cut out, I won't use all the ones I've cut out, but uh, I always prefer to have a few spare. So I've cut out uh, about 30 white hexagons and about 15 black pentagons. There will be a few spare, as I say. Now I know some people cover the ball uh, in paste first and then do another layer. I think you're wasting your time and you're wasting your paste and it's not necessary. So, let me show you how I do it. I've prepared them already, so you're not just sitting here watching me rolling out paste and cutting out shapes. What you do need to do is make sure that your pentagons and your hexagons are the same depth as each other, otherwise your ball's gonna look uneven. So I'm gonna take out a pentagon. I always start with a pentagon first. And go around it with some hexagons okay as you see it lines up really nicely I've made sure they're the same height as each other we're going to go right round the head the pentagon with five hexagons. Now, if there's any slight little gaps, like I've got here, you just merge them together slightly. As I say, we're gonna try and make our front absolutely perfect. And then what we always do when we make cakes anyway, what I always do after I've ganached a cake, 
is I spin it round and uh, make sure I've picked the perfect, the most perfect side and make that the front of my cake. Or sometimes I'll actually pick an imperfection for the front because I know that is uh, where I'm going to put a decoration and it will hide any mistake, uh, hide the imperfection. So as you can see there now, we've gone right round. So now it's time for another pentagon. Make sure it's nice and flat. And then again, add the hexagons. Preparing it like this is a really good way of doing it. I wouldn't recommend cutting and doing it as you go along because you want to work relatively quickly. These little cases I've got, uh, I think are really designed for flower making, but they're quite useful for other things as well. Okay. So back to uh, this side. There's a gap there for a pentagon. Again, just merge it together very gently. Keep going. Keep the hexagons. I'm also going to show you how to make a scarf to put around the back. Um, they obviously are really good because you can customise them to the colour of the child's uh, or adult's favourite football team. I usually make these for children, but I have made them for adults actually. And if you see, if we just build it up, it becomes apparent where the pentagons need to go. And every time you put a pentagon down, you're going to encase it with a hexagon. Once you get that pattern going, it's, it's not that hard to see where they need to go. Now, because your cake will never be a perfect sphere, I'm going to have to put a bit more water on there. Because your cake's not going to be a perfect sphere, you need to um, be a little bit flexible about uh, hiding any uh, little mistakes where they don't quite meet which is why you'll always pick your front side so if you see here this gap here i can see isn't quite right for my pentagon it's not going to quite fit i've lost a little bit because my sphere isn't perfect so i'm going to overlap it like this I'm going to feel where the pen, uh, hexagon is underneath and I'm going to trim the pentagon and peel away that extra paste so it fits in. Now that is no longer a perfect pentagon but after I've added the scarf round no one's going to notice that isn't a perfect pentagon. As I say, it isn't a competition cake. We're trying to make a really cute, nice birthday cake. And if there's a couple of imperfections, they might drive us mad. But actually, our customers aren't really going to see that. Just fit one in the bottom here, I think. Sometimes we need to start trimming the bottom edges. That one is just fitted, I believe. I'm just going to use a knife to gently, the back of the knife, ease that round and tuck it in. Okay. Now, I can see here lift it up so you can see there's no way i'm going to fit a full pen to uh, hexagon into that space so i'm going to use i'm just going to eyeball the space basically i'm going to have a look i can see the top edge 
and then the angle. So I'm going to cut this approximately where I think it will need to be. Okay, I think this is about the space I need. I'm just going to pop a little bit more water on the back of there because it's starting to dry out a little bit. So I'm going to slide that into position. Let's see. It just fits nicely. Okay, and again here, I'm going to need uh, a pentagon in this space. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to have a little look. Put it where I think it needs to be. I'm not too worried if there's any little gaps at the bottom because I can hide those with um, some grass or with the scarf that we're going to pop around. Okay. And that's filled that space there. I've saved the offcuts because they might come in useful on another gap. It's time for a hexagon. This one is approximately there. You just have to have a look at the space. If it's not perfect, just peel it off and, and have another go. That's why it's good to have a few spares. Got a little bit of the black paste on my fingers. Now, a little bit of um, if you get any little marks, you can always take it off with a little bit of um, clear alcohol. Uh, it evaporates, so you don't need to worry um, about well, and children's cakes and things. But if you'd rather, if you're very careful and, and just use water, you can get it off with water, but you just got to go really steady because obviously, you don't want to leave watermarks on your cake okay again i'm just gonna have to trim this one down at the bottom here i'm going to do a pentagon first i think in this gap here okay oh this one <laughs> again it's going to need a little trim this one so i'll put that in position get my scalpel my blade cut down and peel off Perfect. I'll just trim this edge here as well so there's room for my pentagon. Okay, I just keep filling in the gaps as we go along. Need another hexagon here. Now, I'm starting to uh, need to trim in here. So I'm going to trim this like I did with the pentagon because it's a fairly big space so i feel where the one is underneath through the paste and then i feel this side here again I'm trying to cut it so you can see what i'm doing <laughs> a little bit cack handed That's going to be pretty certain where's my, uh, is going to be my back. Because that one isn't so good. But that's okay because we're just creating a realistic cake that uh, is going to look really good from the front. And pretty good from the back. Well, in fact, perfect from the back. But it's going to have the, um, the scarf around it. Okay, I'm getting there. We nearly got the whole bowl. Um, we can't have been going very long. About 15 minutes. Okay. Now, I can see, I just need to trim this up slightly here to make room for the 
enter them to fit in. So again, remove that. Okay, stick it into position. Chuck it in with your knife or another tool, with a, any sort of blade or uh, flat tool. Okay, so I've just got one more to pop in here, one more pentagon, hexagon. Get my hexagons and pentagons mixed up. Okay. And I eyeball the size I need again. Now, they do get a little bit messier on one side. But I'm being realistic and honest here. This is how we turn a profit. You can't make every cake absolutely perfect. But we can present it in the most perfect way to our customers. And when this cake is finished, any of the pieces were just slightly not so perfect, won't be visible. Oops, need a little bit more water in here, I think. Little trim. There we go. Okay. Move these pieces out of the way. You can see it's covered. Now, yep, there are a couple of places where there's little flaws, but there's also some places that look absolutely spot on and perfect and that's going to be the front of our cake so let's smooth it over slightly if you want to use um a smoother you can i don't think it's really necessary uh, if you've uh, done it nice and smoothly i'm just picking my favorite side to go for our front slide it into that one stub that out with my hand I think that's going to be our front, which I think is where we started anyway. Okay. You just spin it around. Eyeball it. Decide where you think it looks best. Okay. Now, so whilst it's still soft, we're going to use the stitching tool um, and put the stitch marks on to make it look a little bit more authentic and realistic. So just carefully run the tool as close to the edge as you can. You want to make sure you don't fall off the edge, but nice and close is great. Now again, try your best to get it perfect, but if it's not, in the grand scheme of the cake that you're passing on to your customer, they're just going to see this really impressive, lovely cake they're not going to see the tiny little flaws and imperfections that you're probably focusing on. Well, that's how I am anyway. I think uh, lots of people that work in the cake industry are the same. We like things to be absolutely perfect. I'm using Saracino past the top. I've got the white, obviously, and then I've got the ready mixed black can mix your own, obviously, but they do have a good range of different colours. And I prefer, especially with the darker colours, like uh, black, um, red I find is a pain to mix. So I always buy in the red and the black, especially, um, just to make my life a little bit easier. I've got some red ready for the scarf, actually. Now, sometimes I make these cakes and pop a little model on them um, of the birthday boy or girl. I don't think I've... Oh, I have made a girl's one, actually. That is true. I have. I did it and it had um, 
it was for her 13th birthday so it had a big 13 on the front not a model but uh, as you can see they're fairly quick to make as for the recipe I just use my normal recipe this one's a chocolate cake but obviously I make them in any of my flavour sponges I just bake it as normal but I would say just make sure it's cooked all the way through before um, taking it out of the oven. I listen to my cakes, <laughs> which is a tip I got off a, a cake friend many years ago when I first started and it's been uh, invaluable. So when you think your cake's finished cooking, just carefully, without burning your ear or cheek, because I have been known to do that, lift it up to your ear. If you can still hear a little fizzing and popping, it's not quite finished baking, pop it back in for another five minutes and then listen again. Uh, that's been a bit of a, a godsend to me, that little tip. We're getting our way around. It does take a little bit of time to do all the stitching, but I think it's a nice, stitch. you don't have to do the stitching, but I just think it adds a little bit of detail and is nice. Um, takes it to that next level, really. I do it all, on all of them, even though some of them are going to get covered by the scarf. I just find it easier to make sure they're all done. And then if the scarf doesn't cover any of the ones that I've left plain, it won't matter. If you have any questions after seeing the tutorial, just pop them in the comments box. And I will do my best to uh, reply and help. These uh, bottom ones are a little bit trickier to do. Obviously you don't want to mark the board with the stitching tool. I've covered this straight on, it's still soft, my green. You could have been organised and uh, have it done ready and dry. Or I could have popped it into the oven for 10 minutes on a really low temperature and then left it for half an hour to firm up. That's another tip. Nearly there. I have tried stitching, putting the stitch marks on before covering the cake before, but it didn't work as well. Um, I found, especially because when you sort of the shape slightly distorted, not the perfect sphere. When you start trying to adjust the size and shape of some of the pieces, it uh. It just made me more work, so I definitely wouldn't recommend stitching before. Oh, a little bit of water on that one, it's coming loose. You don't want too much water, but just enough. I've got a tiny little black mark on one of those there, but I will get that off after I video the tutorial. It's actually quite therapeutic doing this. It's a bit like making ruffles. Just get uh, <laughs> lost in doing it. Yeah, this side's definitely got to be the back. Okay. Have I missed any? Nope, we're there. Okay. So this is going to be my back because I can see 
it's just oh sorry not quite as tidy there okay so the scarf's going to go that way round and this will be the front of our cake at this side okay right i'm going to show you how i do the scarf next um i think we might just uh Okay, let's have a look at how we're going to make the scarf. It's going to go around the back and sides of the cake. I've cut out some Savasino pasta top in red and some strips of blue as well. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to attach the strips of blue at intervals. You can measure the size of your cake and how big you need your scarf to be with a piece of ribbon if you want to. I'm going with all red and blue here, kind of generic uh, colours. I don't want to show too much allegiance to one team, although actually my son's grassroots team do play in red and blue, so uh, they have a bit of loyalty there to uh, to them. <laughs> um, so technically, we shouldn't really be making uh, cakes that are under copyright, so things like a Liverpool cake, you shouldn't really be putting a Liverpool badge on it. So if you use a red and white scarf or dress your little character in a red and, did I say red and blue, red and white, uh, whatever colour it is for the team you're doing, you can use the scarf really to be the, um, line up, see, okay, to be what identifies the team rather than uh, popping the badge on. I'll have one at the back as well. Yeah, okay. Now, you don't need to do this next part, but I like to do it. I've got a, a woolen impression mat. Uh, so I'm just going to pop this down over and put the mat, get a little bit of the woolly marks. Just adds a nice little touch, really, but not necessary. You don't have to do it. Just a nice extra. Make sure you can loosen it off of the mat. Trim the edges. My scarf is at 17 inches long, I think. You'll see I'm just eyeballing it. It doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. No one's going to be getting a ruler out and checking. Okay. I'm just going to put some little marks in the edges here for tassels on the end of the scarf. And again at this end. I'm just going to pop the impression mat back on there. I've not quite pressed hard enough and I'd like that to be a little bit deeper on the edges. That's better. Okay. Make sure they're not stuck together now. Adds a bit of interest to the cake. The tassels flopping around. Okay. Again, let's clear my deck slightly. I'm going to turn the scarf over and I'm going to pop some water on the back of the scarf, not too much. I'm just going to leave the ends of the tassels without the water on. I might pop a little bit on them once it's on the cake to hold it into position. Make a little bit of room here and bring the football cake back into view. Okay. So, make sure I remember where my back is. Yeah, that's definitely my background there. Okay, I'll put into a bit, little bit better. There you go. I'm going to pick up the scarf and because it's nice and strong past the top. I can just lay it round. And smooth it onto the cake.
Now, you're not going to see the back of the cake where there was those few little problems. Sometimes what I like to do is add a little bit of, um, I gather it up a little bit, the material, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. But I'm just keeping it nice and simple today. Straightforward for anyone that's just about to make their first football cake. So that's it really. We can add some little pieces of grass if you want to. Um, often I'll put a name at the front or an age on one of the hexagons or the pentagons. As I say, a little model on top can look nice. But it's fairly straightforward and fairly quick. And I think it's taken about half an hour. So hopefully you'll um, be a little bit braver about having a go if you haven't had a go yet at making one. Um, and um, there we are, finished cake. Thanks very much for watching.